Okay, this is tutorial number seven, uh, Quartz Composer tutorial number seven, and um, I just wanted to tell you about types, which probably I could have told you about early on. I kind of alluded to it in the beginning, but as we look at these different ports, you can see that there are different types for each piece of information. And uh, if I look at the patch inspector here, I can see enable is either true or false. So we'd expect to see a certain kind of type that allows for those sorts of values. That's what Boolean is. So you see type Boolean. That can only, ha only be true or false. And if we double click, there's only true and false. Uh, width should be a number, which in Quartz Composer, a number, of course, can be like any decimal number. It's, it can be a really fine grain number. It doesn't have to be a whole number, but it can be. And then uh, image is actually an image. It doesn't show up here because there's no, uh, no uh, interface element for adding images here, but we could uh, drag an image from another patch and um, connect it to this image input. Uh, mask image is also an image. What else do we have? Uh, well, color sh is actually a separate type, so we've got a type of color. And then uh, blending is interesting. It's an index. So it's actually um, kind of like a drop-down list, but an index is really just a, a whole number. So you can see there's a one next to the word over, and that's because uh, this is item number zero, that's item number one, that's item number two. So when you ever see index, it's probably talking about choosing from a list, but what it basically means is a whole number. So you'd never see 1.215 for an index. Um, but you can connect, I think, uh, a number output from one patch to, to an index input somewhere else, but it, it probably isn't what you want. They're both numbers, but they're different kinds of numbers. Uh, but what I really want to talk about is a type called structure, and in the billboard doesn't have it, so let's add a patch that does use uh, structures. Here is... Here is the RSS importer. I don't know if you know what RSS is, but um, the description here tells you everything. It downloads an RSS feed and spits it out on these output ports. So it's actually going out to the web and or to the internet and finding um, finding an RSS feed that you specify. Uh, don't know if you know what RSS feeds are. I can't really. Uh, go into it right now, but um, every uh, website that's kind of newspaper-like, maybe um, if we look at the New York Times, they have a list of RSS feeds, and what it is is kind of, a, if we go to uh, World News and um, copy this link address, what it is is actually all of the world news that's happening right now, but it's, um, if I click on it, the browser will render it. Uh, so it's kind of headlines and briefs, and also it gives you a link to the real story. But what's really useful about it is that it's kind of uh, the actual data on the other end is actually very readable by computers. So that's one reason to do it here. So I'm going to paste that um, New York Times RSS feed link, and you notice it either. If you look at the original one, it was uh, Apple's News and it's RSS at the end, or you'll see the New York Times one. New York Times one is XML. They're both XML files, but uh, that's a that's a way to know that what you've grabbed is actually an RSS feed. It'll be one of those extensions on there. Uh, so now, what do we do? Well, if we hover over this, it would be nice to see what these outputs are. Uh, I'm not sure you've realized this, but um, nothing really, this patch won't do anything unless it's actually being rendered to the screen. So the easiest way to get some, to get this to render to the screen, and remember what we need for that is any of these blue consumer patches. So if I connected uh, information to text, all of a sudden I'd start seeing, uh, hovering over these ports, I'd be able to see what information is being passed. But until I actually render it, um, I don't, I can't hover over. Um, unfortunately, I can't take a structure and connect it to something that's supposed to be a string, which is uh, the other type that we haven't talked about, that's text. And um, so what I need to do is find a way to get this to render something to the screen so that I can start hovering over these and see the results. If I look in the, li the patch library for structure, I'll see that there are a bunch of um, patches related to structures. You can pick out uh, I haven't even talked about what structures are yet, so I can't really say too much until we actually look at it. I'll just give you a hint. We'll use structure count. Uh, structure is basically a list of stuff. So instead of being one item like a number five or 5.23 or an image, it's actually a, uh, an, 
a list of a bunch of things. So um, this will tell us how many things are in the list. So let's take that information structure. See, it's happy. It's a yellow noodle. And then I'll take that count, which is actually a number, but uh, it's perfectly fine to uh, take something that is an index. In this case, it's the number five. It's not a number, it's an index because there'd never be 1.325 items in the in the structure. There'd always be a whole number, so that's why they use index. Uh, and then it's okay to connect an index to text to, to a string type field. It'll just make that conversion. So you see the difference here. That is the number five in parentheses. This is the number, this is actually the, the letter five, I guess you could say. It's, it's five in quotes. So it's done that conversion for me. Sometimes you can make this connection between disparate types of um, types, but uh, types of um, ports, but you can't do that for something like, you know, a p you can't show a picture where you can't connect a picture to a number field, right? So um, let's see what's happened. Now, there's actually a five down here in the viewer. So there are five things in this information uh, structure. Now, if I hover over it, I should be able to see that's actually what's in the structure. So there are two things to note here. There are, uh, first of all, they, it starts being numbered at zero. So it's items number zero, one, two, three, four. And um, that means there are five things in it. it. Tells you there are five members right there. And uh, the, if you look at the, the list, there's, um, there's a number zero followed by title in quotes. And it tells you what is, uh, what is in item number zero. Uh, if we look over here, you can actually uh, address those individual items by name. So I could say, give me the description out of that structure. That's what structure key member does. Um, if you do uh, structure index member, then it, um, it gives you back, I, I'm sorry, you can, you can look up item number one or item number two in the uh, in the structure. So basically there are a bunch of values in here and it gives you two ways to address any given value, either by number or by name. So let's try this out. If we, if we use uh, structure key member, I can say given this structure, find its title, since it shows me here that there is something called title, and I should be able to just spit that out in the instruction. So there it is, New York Times World. Um, what other things are there? There's, uh, let's get rid of this count. Um, there's also a description, there's a link, there's a system time. Uh, maybe system time isn't so useful to me, but um, maybe I want the link. I know that the link is also uh, item number two, so let's try that. Instead of using a name, let's say, give me item number two of the structure, and let's see what that looks like. There it is, that's, oh, that's, that's the, sorry, that's, Structure key. So this structure key at index tells you, uh, tells you, given a certain uh, index, like two, it tells you what key is associated with it. So uh, link is actually associated with it. What I meant to grab is this structure index member. So it says for this structure, give me item number two, and that should give me a URL. So there it is. Okay, so that's uh, most of what you need to know about um, structures and oh well how about this let's let's look a little further if we look at article list it's actually a structure of structures so it sounds complicated but you can understand what that might mean because it's an article list so this is there are 25 it says 25 members there are 25 articles in this list and each article has its own um, structure associated with it so uh, let's say we want um, to know about story number one, in this case, NSA breach Chinese servers seen as a security threat. So if I want item number one out of there, I could just do the same thing I've done, which is uh, item number one, give me item number one out of here. And if I hover over this, uh, well, you can see right here, it's telling me it's a structure. So it's actually not able to uh, give me the information I need. Um, but let's look back at the list. So item number one, let's say I want the title out of there. So now I'm gonna start chaining these together. So this is actually giving me a structure, structure, this, the item number one of this original uh, structure of structures. And I'm going to get the title out of that individual structure that I got back. And spit that out. 
in the instructions. So there it is. Okay, uh, in the next video, I can tell you how to um, how to maybe uh, cycle through those, or um, well, let's let's just try right now. We can um, we have something called counter, and um, maybe what I can do is anytime I press the up arrow on the keyboard, I'd like to go up in the counter, and if I press down, it'll go down in the counter, and I'll use that as my index. So when I hit the up arrow, it goes to the next article, down arrow goes to the previous article, and so on. So that's all you need to know right now, I think, for structures. You can see that it could get complicated if you have structures within structures, but hopefully that kind of explains it.